You know, there's a lot of stuff that's been said about, well, unmade beds. Um, never show an aesthetically pleasing YouTube video the unmade bed, but this is a realistic day in the life of a software engineer. When I was starting and finishing boot camp, they said throughout, do not work for a startup. Do not go to them because they're unstable, they never have support for engineers and, I mean, junior engineers and, um, they always run out of money. And here I am, me being broke, depressed at that time, suffering through life. I was like, at, at this point, how bad can it get? I need a job. <laughs> this video is gonna be dedicated to what it's like to work at a startup, the realistic situation of it, uh, not the fear mongering that comes with it. There's ups and downs, don't get me wrong, depending on what part of your career you're at, financially, mentally, all this stuff. <laughs> Some of you guys have been around since I was in my mom's house, um, in my room learning how to code. Like, this is my office now. Like, I don't know how to say how happy I am with this. Like, I literally have nine foot windows and maybe an apartment tour is coming soon, but. I have a big view of this giant tree there, um, alleyway, sometimes you see some interesting stuff. Benefits. If you're in your journey learning how to be a software engineer right now, I promise you, keep pushing. I'm currently dog sitting right now and there's a lot of hair on my floor and when you have black wooden floors, you can see everything. It's not fun. As I do some housework right now, let me tell you guys about the workload you can expect from a startup. There's this belief that all startups are somehow just you know, you're working 24 seven, blah, blah, blah. That's not the case. Always situational. Not every company is going to be the same. And depending on what type of uh, work you're doing, depending on what goals you have as a company, that's what's gonna decide what is going to give you a higher, harder workload or whatever the case is. I've worked at multiple startups. <laughs> I've been the first hire at a startup before. If you guys remember that, they just decided to stop paying me. It's all different. The, the previous startup that I worked at, everyone had a hard stop at 5 p.m. It doesn't matter what we're doing. <laughs> they respected so much people's personal time because at the end of the day, if you're running your company in an efficient way, for the most part, there should be no need for you to be expecting people to work dramatic overtime hours. One thing I found about startups is depending on what you like, there's always a company out there doing just that, or they're the starting or they're a mid-sized company or a large size company. Everyone is so busy, they just give you tasks and they expect you to just get it done. They're not hovering over you. And granted, most typical engineering teams are like that, but I think it is very important to just be trusted to do your work. And speaking of the work you do, you have a higher impact. Everything you're doing is not just some recycled thing. It's not just some task they give you to, as an intern or whatever the case is to work on. No, what you're working on, if you start something on Monday, you will see it live and direct and being used by users by Friday. That's just how it is when you're working at a small team. And the things you are doing, they are actually being seen do you think more black people should get into tech? Yeah, and I think more black people actually enjoy it. I think black people like challenges because we do. <laughs> We're she said, I'm a strong, independent black woman. I don't like to struggle. I like a challenge. <laughs> All right, I'm going to my meeting. Um, yeah, I'll talk to you later, dude. So usually for breakfast, um, I don't eat breakfast. I'll never be that grown up. What I started doing is just making a simple smoothie to make myself feel full. I feel like breakfast shouldn't be a heavy ass meal. So boom, it was me. It was me and my smoothie. Two bananas, yogurt of any sort, you know, a little protein, almond milk, breeze if you must. This. So after a lot of trial and error in terms of what works for me throughout the day, um, I found out my brain literally just decides to not function while I'm problem solving when I have not got enough sleep or something to eat in the morning. Um, surprise, surprise. What the world knew forever is something I'm finding out now as a 27 year old. So I think it's important to just make sure your brain is functional, you're at your best, uh, you're least likely, you're not as likely to make mistakes. Um, I don't believe in this whole perception of staying up till 5 a.m. trying to code when at some point you're not being as productive as you should be. Um, just because you work for a longer time doesn't mean you're as productive. I'd rather work for three hours of high productivity than 
eight hours of just clicking around doing whatever. Another bonus of working at a startup is the simple fact that meetings are not as likely. Uh, the bigger a company gets, the bigger a team gets, the more likely you are to have to deal with meetings. Not the case. So that's why I'm able to freely go out about my day because again, as long as I get my work done, it doesn't really matter what time I start as long as I'm in whatever meetings we need for the day. But some days I work later into the night, some days I finish everything in the morning and hang out for the afternoon. So usually I sit here by my little window, do some minor stretches. If we're being real, <laughs> Realistically, I forget about this half the time. But every time I do, I don't regret it. Um, you don't have to be the best at it, but just giving your body a little, a little stretch -roni goes a long way. All right, so another sort of fact, the money side of working at startups. Um, I think when you're newer in your career and you literally come from being broke, this doesn't really hit you as much. But say you're a senior engineer at Google or something like that, you decide to work at a startup, just expect and you should know that the money will not be the same, obviously. Now granted your footprint will be way bigger, it'll be way more useful to this younger startup. The cash side will not work. They give you some stocks or whatever you want to call it. I don't want to say the wrong word than have people correct me. But typically in tech you get paid cash and some stocks, right? And if a stock does well, over time, you make even more money. If you are a newer engineer in any capacity working at a startup, listen, you got your first job, you're probably a six-figure job if you work in the Bay Area or California in some case, um, you're just happy to be there. Things went horribly wrong. I coded for a few hours. I've been stuck for a few hours. I started stuck. I've ending stuck. <laughs> yeah! Anyways, here's another programmer buddy of mine. You guys remember this little Saudi Arabian face? Do you want to share with them a year of your career and what have you learned so far? Absolutely nothing, ladies and gentlemen. You have to ask a lot of questions in your job, even if it's stupid questions. Have you ever looked at a problem that you know is not hard, but for some reason your brain is just not working? Yes, all the time. Sometimes I'd be like, how to declare a vector in C++, even though... <laughs> yeah, she's a C++ developer. Um, we're not nerds like that here. We're very basic. I'm not a, I dropped out of school for a reason. You don't have to talk to me like this. Well, you don't work in a startup, right? Would you work in a startup now that you have for the past year? Haven't? Yeah, I definitely would. I feel like you learn more at startups, but I, I can't, unfortunately. Yeah, because she needs a, she needs to be sponsored to work. So yeah, the same sentiment. You might learn a little bit more at startups depending on the situation, but I feel like you've learned a lot at your company and... You know, I think also what matters a lot is the type of team that you're in. From what you always tell me, your team, like, gives you pretty solid challenges and you have a lot of responsibility, you know? Not to mansplain it, but go ahead. Uh, yeah, I feel like I got lucky. Okay, we got that. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you didn't finish talking? Go ahead. I said I, said I got lucky with my team because they're, they're all my coworkers are always trying to find new areas for me to explore. They're like, I think you should do more Android, like Java coding. We have a young consultant, Bethany. A young consultant. That's what you do, right? That is what I do. Professionally. Bethany, tell the people what you do. I am a consultant um, for a... Speak with some like like you care. Like you, you are living. You know what I mean? Like you're alive to tell the people that you consult and make PowerPoints for a living. Yes, I'm passionate about making PowerPoints for a living as a consultant. You want to talk about yourself? Um, sure, I'd love to. Anyways, never mind. Don't do that. Um, so Bethany wants to get into tech. <laughs> Project management? Product right? management. Product management. I guess my question to you, would you work at a startup for your first job or do you want to go somewhere more established? Um, I would work at a startup for my first job. Yeah. I feel like there's more, you have the opportunity to wear more hats when you work for a smaller company. Yeah, that big head needs a lot of hats. Yes, large head, large thoughts, lots of hats. I don't know what it is, but I feel like you could easily go from consultant to project management or product management 
Yeah, I agree. Just a different kind of PowerPoint. <laughs> Bethany is here to serve one purpose and one purpose only, and it's to... No, I think two purposes. One, to be your tripod, and two, and two to give you access to Costco. To give me access to Costco. I'm going to miss the gym. i got to go to the gym after this because I'm so active. I'm such a... Not that active. So you know how we all have struggles as humans? Bethany is the only person who's never struggled. Ever. <laughs> You've ne you have no trauma. <laughs> No, nothing. Just getting through life has a house. How did you do it? I have no idea. You never wanted to maybe have like a bad day? No, kind of? I've, I've had bad days. You've had bad days? Yeah. Where things just didn't work out for you one day, you're like, ah, that red light wasn't supposed just to be there today. a little bit today. too long today. What about health issues? Um, I thought I had a blood clot in my arm one oh, time. I thought I had a blood clot in my arm one time. I'm <laughs> That's it? <laughs> A minor inconvenience to the doctor's office? That's what you have to deal with? I had to go to the ER. I could have died. Oh. <laughs> Look how sexy this is. Yeah, Bethany likes to eat rotisserie chickens when she goes to bed. Just grabs the whole thing and... Why are you on me? Like, you told me to get closer to yeah, you. Yeah, but not bust it open in front of me, dude. Like, Why not? Give me, give me some... Give me... <laughs> what? Leave me be. Ugh. No, there were three women in my vlog today. Three? And I want you to know nobody had this much, this much energy towards me like you did. Now people are gonna think I swing both ways. I flirt with you so good when I actually talk to girls, I fumbled the bag. Yeah, you is great at flirting with men, but <laughs> with anyone else. It's, um, does she like me, guys? It's I don't know what no she go. wants. EJ, don't act like you don't know how to use a cardio machine. You're embarrassing me. Is it good for the footage? <laughs> Do I look like I'm working hard? That's right. Cardio. Really ran a whole mile. I've never seen you do that before. Yeah, maybe because we didn't start at 10 miles an hour. Well, maybe from if, the drop. You're hanging out. if you're hanging around with an African, you should always start at 10 miles an hour. Yeah, swimming isn't a real sport. For those of you guys who think it is, it's not. Yes, right? it is. The water is literally doing everything you want for you. Like, is it's running cool. even a sport? It's survival. When am I ever gonna have to swim away from a shark? Might have to. When? When you get in the water. Why would I? <laughs> Don't be so hard on yourself. Mm -hmm. Count each day. Yep. One day at a time. Yep. And hey, never miss twice. If you, if you miss one day, don't miss twice. Always get it the next day. Just know that no matter what path you pick, again, I'm new in my career, but don't take opinions from everyone and let them fear monger you into like, oh, I want to go do this career path. I want to take this career path. Do whatever you feel you need to do to get what you want out of life. Mm, preach. Preach it, sir. That's a fact, right? Preach it, sir, yes. That's a fact. So you if, one you want to, if you it. want to be a super programmer Wait. and just take on the hardest problems, find some of the hardest companies to work at. If you want to, you know, chill and coast, go work at Google, you know? If you want to have responsibilities and jump from startup to startup and just always work at startups, there's people who do that too. Do whatever you want to get the life that you want out of everything. Like, every, everyone wants something different. Some people just want to freelance because they have no kids, they don't want to sit in one place. Some people, whatever the case is. Anyways, that's it. Like, subscribe. I hope this was informative in some way. If not, I got to make a video with this overpriced camera. Bye! Larry out. Raise your hand if you bought a $6,000 camera and you haven't used it to make any type of decent video. This is the first decent video I've been trying to make ever since he bought it.